So let's look at a couple more things regarding uh, personal that we'll do business. Uh, briefly, if we look at the top right corner under work, click on learning. Let's look under work at the top right and then click learning. Here we have a variety of then in their learning environment. Learn the most in-demand business tech and creative skills. Free for one month. How many of you have ever heard of lynda.com? L-Y-N-D-A.com. lynda.com is a website that has existed for like 15, probably even 20 years by now. lynda.com has been a long time training website. They, they, that was the, the, the de facto place that you go to learn everything about web design, about marketing, about everything, lynda.com. They uh, are not free. They're usually around $300 a year to get access to all of this training. They were eventually bought by LinkedIn for a few billion dollars. So LinkedIn bought Linda. That's what we're seeing here when we're in this learn something. These previews here about learn advanced Google Analytics. There is a course here of text and video that teaches you Google Analytics. There's another one of various things. So you want to uh, check that out. Yes. Lynda.com is like the best training solution for all of these topics. And to do the best, it's not free. They give you a 30-day trial. And then if you've got the time in 30 days, you can learn a lot. Then after that, there's the paid. So Linda, you know, they've got 5,964. Linda Weinman, she was the founder. And um, you got all of these uh, courses, even in kind of esoteric things like uh, how to use uh, eBay effectively, how to sell on eBay, and a lot of technology and, and marketing. Become a project coordinator. So a 16-hour course in uh, project coordinating and you do get a certificate of completion at the end so you're paying that amount to go through the courses but you do get a result a certificate it's part of the whole LinkedIn family I'm not sure that if you pay for the premium of LinkedIn you get like lynda.com for free I would hope I would wish I don't know but this is a place for you to learn a variety of things and get training. So that's the lynda.com aspect. If I go back to the main LinkedIn, the last item here, under work, I see SlideShare. Click on SlideShare. It goes to slideshare.net. Slideshare.net is basically like the YouTube of PowerPoint. YouTube is all about uploading video. Um, Slideshare is about uploading PowerPoint presentations. And they were valuable enough that LinkedIn bought them for hundreds of millions of dollars. So now it's part of the LinkedIn family, Slideshare. On our notes here, LinkedIn owns Linda.com online training in a variety of topics. Technology, marketing, photography, etc. One month free. We have to look up the prices. I I for a long time, I've seen it for $299. I don't know if they've changed it recently, lynda.com, but it's it's not free after one month. SlideShare 
net the YouTube uh, PowerPoint. View and share presentations. It's basically a social network itself that focuses on presentations. Now, that sounds so boring. I've seen so many terrible PowerPoint presentations. Why would I want to jump onto a social network full of PowerPoints? Well, look at it. If you see here, Discover, Share, Present, there is, by Ryan Holiday, 24 books you've never heard of but will change your life. LinkedIn Learning Solutions, Insights from a Workplace, and Atifa One, How LinkedIn Built a Community Half a Billion. Okay, so there's these various presentations, these PowerPoints, slides, on topics, 423,000 views, 22,000 views, 130,000 views. You might be able to create a presentation, upload it here for free, and you might get that visibility. You might go viral. You might create something that people really want to look at. Rand Fishkin, Inside Google's Numbers in 2017, updated, uploaded one week ago, 39,000 views. Kishore uploaded Pino, real-time distribution, Olaf data store, whatever that means. One year ago, 191,000. That sounds so specific to s such a small segment of people, but it's gotten 191,000 views. Question? Do you put the slide share in the search button, or where do you put it? You can uh, type the address, or you'll find it if you click on work, and it'll be the last item on the list. What else do we have? Leslie Samuel, how to become a thought leader in your niche. Uploaded five minutes ago, 430,000 views, supposedly. Wow. How could that be possible? Visual design with data, Aaron Izari. All of these say five minutes. That might be a glitch in their system at the moment. Ned Potter. Yeah, all of these say five minutes, so there's probably a glitch. The one that wants six minutes. <laughs> so, featured topics. So, people uploading content in science, government, internet. You could upload content in these various topics. Is it free? Yes. Is it months or minutes? Well, oh, yeah, five months. That makes more sense. Not five minutes. Five months. <laughs> five months ago. That makes sense. 430 minutes. How do you, oh, it's you just upload to do your own? Yes. Question. Now, when we have our slideshow on this, this is embeddable on any... Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So if I look at one of these, like the inside the numbers, if you view any of these PowerPoints, you'll see it here. It's a PowerPoint. It's got 31 slides. You can go next, etc. And then there will be the button to share. This then can be shared or sent or embedded anywhere else. So you can upload your PowerPoints here and then have it easily then have people share it or you know paste it back into your own website so that it's viewed. Normally a PowerPoint can't really be viewed that easily on the web, but if you upload it here, they create the code for you to then paste it on your site or another site so that your PowerPoint is easily visible. Yes. 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 Mine doesn't show. Just one moment. Yes. Where did you write the slide share? Where did it? No, once again, to find slide share, you click on work, and then you scroll down to the very last item, and it's slide share. No, mine doesn't. Mine doesn't have it. Oh. Oh, the one is up Should be the last one, yes. Slide share. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, slide share is the YouTube of um, PowerPoints. Valuable enough. I, re I remember using it years ago. This has probably been around at least 10 years. I've, I've used uh, and and I've enjoyed SlideShare for a while. And I remember a few years ago, probably three years ago, LinkedIn bought them. Uh, I forget how much it was, but it was literally hundreds of millions of dollars. They bought this site, 
and now they've integrated into LinkedIn. So LinkedIn itself um, has lots and lots and lots of users. Apparently they're up to about 500, 500 million now. So LinkedIn has lots of people using it. It's a big social network. They have then their hands in, in lynda.com for training. They have their hands in SlideShare for, for this other aspect. So for the value for you, obviously lynda.com doesn't have value for everyone, although I think it's very valuable. You can learn a lot. But for you, what you have value, what has value for yourself or your business is slideshare.net. Slideshare.net is this, where you can upload your PowerPoints, where you can... Um, go viral where you can have your content visible by other people. What about for webinars? Is there something like this for webinars? That's a good point. Probably. I don't um, have one off the top of my head. Um, that'd be something to, to look up. You know, I could do a Google search um, webinar directory, maybe something like that. slide share. Use it. Uh, to upload a PowerPoint for people to to find and download. Question. Yes, Matsu. Is an icon of what? Yeah. Uh, 24 hours, 24 minutes. Uh huh. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, clip slide. Okay, when you hover over it, clip slide, uh, that's their term. For like sharing it in just this slide in SlideShare. Um, this one, like for example, here, 430 people clipped this slide. So this slide that I'm looking at, this one over here, 98. So this one slide, people liked it enough that they clipped it, that they sort of like saved it, like shared it. Yeah, it's a little bit of a process because you, you need to, okay, you click the clip and then, well, what's the name of it? What's the description? Are you making it public? Is it only in your own account? So just clicking on, on it will let you clip a particular slide of a presentation. It's going to be saved on the LinkedIn or it's going to be saved somewhere? Saved in your slide share. LinkedIn has some things, and SlideShare has other things. So your SlideShare is where you've clipped things, where you've saved things, where you've liked the presentations. So I can see it afterwards. If you wanted to then put it on LinkedIn, you have to do uh, the share part of it, and then that can send it back to LinkedIn. Because there were two separate websites, it's a little separated, but you can combine them by doing share and then sharing it back to LinkedIn. Question. Yes. I have a, I have a PowerPoint presentation and I upload it and uh, I share. Can I choose who I want to see them? Or will it have to be huh. I think this one is mostly public. I haven't uploaded one recently. I don't know if they've changed it. Maybe they're Maybe there are some privacy settings to only allow some people, but at least it's public or private. But there might be some some uh, some special features. So if we're private, it's only for the people in the my network. People in your network, or if you um, if you allow people certain people to see it. Most of this I would probably have it public. Most of the stuff that we talk about in these classes, you almost always want it public because you want to reach as most uh, audience, 
as possible. So there's some examples why we may want something private, but for a business, you probably want everything as much public. Do you think about the badges? No, not really. It's kind of easy to do. You can just follow the steps. How do you on that one page? Yes. So the um, the slide share and Linda.com are are these other aspects of the social network. Um, those were popular enough that they were bought by LinkedIn. Now, if you haven't heard, LinkedIn itself was bought. Did you hear that? Someone bought LinkedIn. Anyone know who? Facebook. No. Microsoft. Microsoft. So Microsoft bought LinkedIn for a few billion dollars uh, less than two years ago, probably one year ago. So uh, Microsoft bought LinkedIn. They felt it was it valuable. It was valuable enough that they bought it, and uh, it has shown more and more growth. And people have been signing up and using it. So you know, there's always a bigger fish. Is Jeff still in charge? Uh, Jeff. Jeff I forget his. I forget the name of the of the of the person. If that's the person, I don't know. I, I don't know how far that went about what has changed. It maybe uh, they kept the original team intact because it worked. I don't know. Um, that'd be something we can look up on the various business uh, news websites. Yeah, I'm friends with him on LinkedIn. And, um, on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, sometimes it takes a while for this stuff to change. I know when Facebook bought Instagram, they kept the team all along. In some companies, they buy something and then they change it completely. For example, I just saw the headline here, Starbucks closes. Do you know that they own Tivana? Starbucks owns Tivana, and they just closed every shop. Yeah, it looks like he's still a CEO. Oh, okay. So for Starbucks, they bought Tivana a few years ago, I guess, and uh, now they're closing it down completely. So there's 3,000 jobs gone. Are you and, still a business? Yes. Yeah, So um, LinkedIn, the value of it, there's a lot of value. There's a lot of usage. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of users. Um, this has been the focus on the uh, personal. Let me ask all of you this to see how we can do this the easiest way. On the work button, how many of you see a button that says create a company page? Raise your hand. Three people. Okay, this is something that yeah. then is different for for a lot of us. Oh, at the bottom. Okay. So let's look at this link right here. Mine was here in the middle, and I guess for other people, it's at the bottom or somewhere. Yeah, the bottom is. Okay, let's click on create a company page. Yes. I'm curious. I'm not sure if I don't already have one. Would it show up here if I did? It would show up right here. If you click on me, okay. it would show what company pages you manage. If you don't have anything under manage under me, you don't have a business page yet. Let's look under work and let's click on create a company page. So there's various things we're going to fill in. And it's going to say, okay, the various purposes for the business LinkedIn, raise brand awareness, promote career opportunities, build relationships. Some very nebulous ideas. But brand awareness, educate customers on your products and services. Just like every other day that we've been here, we've talked about how Twitter for business is helpful for you, how Facebook for business is helpful, how LinkedIn for business is helpful the exact details of how that all works. It's what we've talked about in the personal stuff, but with a few tweaks for business. We still want to set up the profile. We want to post stuff. We want to use the network, but thinking in terms about the business. So setting this up. I'm going to make one up just so that I've got something to, to work with. Um, you might already have one, so it would be found under me. 
but I'm going to make this up. And I would say, for most of us, usually, as we do in these classes, let's all just make this up. And then we can delete it later, just to learn these concepts. Because whatever changes and stuff you do on this could be visible by everyone. And therefore, I don't want to put the wrong thing or put something that's not real on the real business account. So I'm going to make something up here. Victor's Bakery. So my company name on LinkedIn is going to be Victor's Bakery. The address is going to be linkedin.com slash company slash whatever here. It takes away the special characters, it takes away the spaces, and puts dashes. This can, of course, be still edited. I don't like Victor-S-Bakery. So I can take it away like that, or I suppose I can put it as one. Or I can really change this as I want. The original Victor's Bakery, I guess. If that name's already been taken, company slash Microsoft. That one might have been taken. It'll tell me when I try to save it. Capitalization and such uh, says, in this case it does matter, but it can only be lowercase. We can type numbers, hyphens, <coughs> or Chinese, Japanese, or Korean characters. So obviously I want that apostrophe there, but apostrophes are not valid in the address. This link right here, it says LinkedIn members, so people in LinkedIn or search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo uh, will use this unique address to find your page. Once you set, this cannot be changed later. So let's be careful here. I'm making up a business just to teach you this. I'm going to then take away Victor's Bakery from a legitimate Victor's Bakery. So be careful about that. I would be more comfortable to put, you know, some number. That way um, the name is not claimed. So since it can't be changed later, does that also mean that it can't be used by anybody else later? Yeah, because if I set it up in this account, I've claimed it and I can't change it, it's on my account, so other people wouldn't have access to it anymore. I've claimed it. Okay. But we're going to delete it. Yeah. If we delete it, that's when it then can be re freed for other people. Oh, yeah. all right. yeah. So then you have to verify you're an official representative. I'll click create page. So here it's showing things about what we've talked about before, but their version of it. Make a great first impression on candidates by adding a logo and cover photo. That's what I said earlier. You want to fill in the profile. You want to put a picture. Previously it was a picture of yourself. Now here it's a picture of the company logo. I don't have the logo with me right now to upload it. That's something I would do at home where I've got my pictures. Give candidates full context. That's filling in that about information, that biography information. Writing as much as possible to show people what the business is about, what are you selling, what are your goals, mission statement, all of that. So filling in the bio. And we have the ability now to set this in multiple languages. If I'm targeting my company that is going to sell uh, in, in the US and Japan, I would want to set up uh, the account in English and Japanese. I don't know if there's a limit to how many you can set various languages, but again, this is not going to be automatic. Just because I select to automatically set it in Chinese does not mean LinkedIn will trans translate my site for me. We have to write the t content itself in Chinese and Japanese and Spanish, etc. I'm going to click Get Started. I'm in my edit mode. The language of this site is in English, default. I can set all the other languages. Background photo. We want a background photo that is very, very wide and thin. So if my photo is smaller than that, you will see the edge of it. If it's bigger than that, it will only show a piece of it. Those are the dimensions. Get 
Facebook for business. Facebook. Uh, oops, LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn for business. Click on work. Click on create. What was the exact word? It was create company page. Click on work. Click on create company page. the first time. Afterward, after you've created click me, and then you'll see in the manage section so now I've got company, Victor Baker. So after you've created it, you'll have a manage section of me, and then you'll be able to go manage your page, your business page. business listing. Background photo, which they are saying it is 1536 by 768. Pixels. Set your logo. Minimum of 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And the other things, of course, the name of the business. Looks like you have a certain amount of space there. About the business, company description required. Optional specialties. So these are basically keywords. Specialties is cookies. Let's see how we can game this. We could say affordable baking. So these are keywords. Specialties. What our business is about. Maximum of 20. These are keywords, again, what people may search for when they're in LinkedIn. What people are interested in as the LinkedIn algorithm looks at your web, your LinkedIn and then it figures out you seem to be interested in cooking and baking. Here's a business you may be interested in because it's got baking keyword. It's interesting you can't make your own. I did. I put affordable baking. I mean, no. I mean, it doesn't let you just put in something crazy, right? Like something new. Yeah, something crazy. And then if there's an X, though. Well, that's if you want to remove it. I added oh. I added that, and now if I want to remove it, I can remove it. I thought the X mean it doesn't accept it. No, because your mouse might be near it, and it says, okay, remove. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So I thought it would only let you a certain amount of things, but it looks like you can put just about what you want, but you only need 20. So specialties about us. Paragraph of info about the business. Specialties. Keywords about the business. These are searchable concepts. And then you probably want to fill in this address stuff, especially if you're a physical location. Notice it's optional, actually. So if you don't have a physical location, if you do this, you know, on the internet, or you do this uh, out of your garage, uh, you wouldn't want to put your home address there. You'd want to fill that in if it's relevant. Required website address. Required website address. So if you don't have a website address, for the moment, you have to put some things. You can put example.com, but you want a real address. And that could be, I think that could even work if you've got a Facebook, you put facebook.com slash my business, you know, whatever that whatever your Facebook address is. It just wants an address as part of your account. You could put your Indeed account. What's that? You could put your personal LinkedIn account. You could. That, that makes sense. You could also put the personal. 
address. Yeah, it just wants an address. Company size, pretty straightforward. How many employees do you have? I guess if you if it's just yourself working out of your garage, I won't tell on you if you put 200. <laughs> but you might want to keep that accurate. Uh, 2 to 10. That doesn't sound so low rent. Uh, industry, what's, what's your business about? There's a lot to choose from. You can only choose one, but there's a lot of possible industries here. And I would try to choose the one that is the most accurate for your business. So Victor's Bakery. I'm going to look in the food section, maybe. EF food production, food and beverages. Is there anything about cooking, baking, chemicals, banking, food production, so probably food and beverages for this business. Optional, year founded. This is just to, um, you know, create a story for your for your business. This is the other aspect of marketing. In my other class, the SEO class, we talk in there about marketing strategies and company profiles and such, and all of this stuff is valuable for uh, creating this uh, this business, this legitimate business, where you have founders and you have a story and it helps you reach an audience. The people that drink, you know, the most famous coffee, of course, is Starbucks, but there's also Pete's Coffee, Joe's Coffee, Seattle's Best. There's all of these coffees, and they all try to differentiate each other by having a different persona, a different founding myth, and a different style of their advertising, marketing. So that's part of all of that. Company type. Fill that in as what makes sense. Um, Self-employed for many of us, perhaps. If you've gone more through to actually getting the licenses and all of that, you're probably a sole proprietorship. Um, can't tell you what to fill in here, but probably self-employed is most of us. Optional featured groups. Now, uh, groups are... Um, When we talked about Google+, Plus, we talked about communities. Communities were places where people on Google+, Plus congregated on a topic. Um, Facebook has groups where people on Facebook come together on a topic. LinkedIn has groups where people come together on a topic. So a lot of networks have this. Google+, Plus, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can create your own group, but what did I say about link about uh, Google Plus groups slash communities? Don't create your own community. Don't create your own group, because then you have to be a moderator. Then you have to keep the community in, on track. Then you have to remove the spam and deal with a community. Join communities instead. Connect with communities to get more value. In LinkedIn, it's the same sort of thing. As you start typing a keyword here, let's see something about food. Food industry jobs group, food industry careers, food safety and quality assurance, food and beverage industry professionals. These are groups that someone or some business created before, and I want to be connected with that group. The value for a business, as we talked about in Google Plus and such, is I can further make more connections here. I can reach the people that are here. I can try to reach out to them, link with them, connect with them, send them messages. We're, we're connected as part of this group. Let's see, I'll select one. In this case, there are 45,000 members. Let's see something else. Food industry careers, 82,000. I can set up to three of them. Let's say, is there anything about small business? Small business and self-employed group. Independent consulting. So let's choose the first one, and that one's got 36,000 members. So I'm setting up the 
basics of my account here. I could then set it up in other languages, but I have to manually fill in these other items. I need to put something here. I've got 2,000 characters. Uh, family owned bakery in the heart of San Diego. And as we've said for other networks, these are keywords that could help you get found when people search on Google or in LinkedIn or on Bing or Yahoo, etc. They could find your listing based on what you fill in. So finally on that, I will click top right corner. There's cancel and there's publish. Once I click publish, then people can start finding this on LinkedIn. Before I publish, I also have other admin tools. I have updates, analytics, etc. So this is in your overview that I'm editing. I'm going to publish, but notice this whole company profile has its own interface, different than the personal one. The personal one has home, network, jobs, etc. But once I switched over to my business listing, now I get a different sort of screen with different sort of buttons and different things to do. Publish. Switching over to updates. Now my business can do updates just like a person. But here definitely I need to think about what are what am I sharing here? What's the purpose? Who am I trying to attract? I can add images and text and links. I will get stats. How many comments did I get and shares and all of that? Back on my overview, that's that screen. Analytics, I can get even more detail. Analytics, what were my visitors in the last X amount of time? How did my updates do? This thing that I shared, I got a lot of views. This thing didn't. Who are my followers? Who has come to this profile and clicked follow? And again, when we've talked previously, the whole point of all of this following on all of the networks is to build an audience, a captive audience. As I get more and more followers and I post stuff like sale this Saturday, some amount of people are going to be interested in that and click that button. Some are not. But the more followers I have, the more active I am, the better. And this is different than the personal one. This one, I definitely would want to get as many followers as possible. <coughs> On the personal, I'm only limiting it to the 101 that are most valuable to me. But for the business, this goes back to what we've talked about before. More followers, more better. More followers, much better. Notifications. Just another screen to, to look again at all our notifications. This looks like the style of, of LinkedIn uh, 1.0. The, the current LinkedIn has a different kind of look to it, and I'm seeing on a couple of spots it's showing the old LinkedIn style. They haven't gotten up to this part to, to update it, looks like. You can see that goes back to the new style. But, but notifications goes back to the old style. This is going to be under, let's see, admin tools. Where did they put it? Sometimes they put it under help, close the business. Somewhere we have somewhere we have that option to delete the business. Again, they've 
change things up. I'll have to look it up a little bit more a little later. Business page. When you did publish, that saves it. Click companies at the top of the page, choose any other company you want to delete, admin tools. Removing a company page. Your company page, okay, the company must be fewer than 10 employees. Unlike personal, company page affects all employees. Okay, great, how do you do it? Um, If you would like a company removed, uh, please contact us. It looks like they're making it a little bit harder to remove it. So in the help section, there's a contact button that I want to remove. I want to remove the, the company page. Now, the thing is that th you're not associated directly. Victor Campos is not associated that he works or has anything to do with Victor's Bakery. I just put my name on it. But for the moment, don't worry. Uh, you have to go through the process of going into the help screen and asking them to delete it. But it's not going to show me, Victor, as anything related to Victor's Bakery. Well, you got to make it private, though, don't you? Victor's Bakery? Yeah. Otherwise, your contacts will see it. No, that's what I'm saying. My contacts will not see it. For example, I, ha I manage, I help manage the businesses of other companies. It would be very bad for Victor the person to be visible all over these other businesses that have nothing to do with Victor the person. So most networks, like LinkedIn, don't show the person behind the business oh, oh, unless oh. it's explicitly set. So I'm going to put a link into our network folder to, to the direct link to contact to delete the page. And again, I'll show us the network folder a little bit later how to delete a LinkedIn uh, business page, contact them and ask them to delete. So I'm curious here. I'm going to go back to Social Media Examiner and I'm going to search here LinkedIn for Realtors. How to create LinkedIn uh, to promote your business. Sounds good, but it's from 2015, so it's a little bit old. How to enhance your LinkedIn profile, 2013, even older. 2010. LinkedIn changes makes you what you need to know. Oh, here's also a side article on how to use SlideShare. So the point of this again is to to look at various trade publications, various websites about their advice on the latest on how to use LinkedIn for personal or for business. I think I mentioned it previously, but I also like to go to the comments section of Social Media Examiner because at the end of an article, there's usually a lot of great feedback from real people on the particular topic. And they may even have uh, further links to look at regarding that particular topic. At Social Media Examiner, they take a little bit more effort to have a good amount of a good, a good variety of uh, real comments. A lot of other sites can, can degenerate down to just shouting matches and all, all of that. Social Media Examiner, uh, I think, works a lot better to keep that on track.
So the usage, the exact usage of how do I use exactly LinkedIn for my business is as far as I can show because we have a class full of diverse needs and all of that. And as I've said on the previous days, I can show you as much of the tools as I can. And then during the labs and breaks and such, we can talk uh, a little bit more to figure out your needs. But this is what I wanted to cover for the day regarding LinkedIn, the general idea of what it is, the various features, the big idea of creating a business listing, and then it's up to you to start to use it. But general questions as we wind down the main lecture on LinkedIn today? Yeah, when to jobs, skill, or profile, add skills, and that, it wouldn't let me. So maybe um, if you could do that. Which particular screen? So I'm on my, oh, is it on personal or, or the business? Personal. Okay, I'm on personal. And then where? Um, it's on under the part where you ask it. Like if you go down right now, um, down, down, or wait, where are your skills? There, skills. Mm -hmm. See how you added? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying to add some. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, how I went under profile. Yeah, and then try to type. Oh, is that all you do? Yeah, these skills, this is one of the ones that, this is a spot where these are going to be already predefined. Oh, right. So as you start to type something, it should pop up with something that exists. If you're typing something that doesn't exist, it's not going to let you add it because they don't have it in their system. So these are, these are skills that LinkedIn does recognize that I've added here. 37 others. So if there isn't something that it recognizes, then it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't show up. Pet that endorsement thing, could you talk about that real quick? I have these various skills and I'm claiming I know about teaching and I'm claiming I know all about that. So for it to be proved, I can get endorsements. The connections that I have, I have 101 connections. And here, Miguel endorsed me that, yeah, Victor does know about web design. So an endorsement is like a sort of a proof from my colleagues that I do know about that. The way I get those is I've got my connections and I have to go to that to their particular profile and there's a button that says ask to be endorsed. Oh. Let me see if I can see that. If I go to one of my first um, first level connections, uh, I can message them to ask about endorsing. I believe that's going to be more of her own content. Oh, endorse. It just had it. It just showed, it just showed it. See? All right, there endorse. Okay. Um, oh, that would be endorsing her. Endorsing her. So they have to come to my profile, where then they can choose the particular skill to choose to endorse it. Here it says, well, uh, you've got experience in social media. She has experience in social media. Do you want to endorse her to prove that she has skills in social media? So again, it's about perhaps starting the ball rolling by messaging them, messaging, messaging your connection, saying, can you endorse me on these skills? And then they will, um, they will click endorse. Mine gets those three dots. No, I just did it. I clicked endorse. I mean, I had to ask her. You click message. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, resume 2.0, and to prove these things, I ask for these endorsements. I ask for uh, for people to prove that I that I have these things. So we have those two aspects: the size, of the, the two sides of the same coin of LinkedIn, the personal and the business, and then you can decide what's What's best for you? So at the moment, I'll end the main lecture. Question? Uh, how we can see the company profile? The company profile, you can get back to it by clicking on the me icon, and then you will be able to manage your company profiles. Yes? You can have other people manage their profile. I mean, that company, like you guys pull other people and stuff like that. 
when you're on your company. Administrator. Under exactly manage admins. So if I want other people to help me manage this, if I've got enough to do, well, I go back to my company profile here, and then under admin tools, manage admins, I can let other people also change the picture, add pictures, do updates. And this is like the other social networks that we've talked about that you can add other people here and give them various roles. So only let others administrate this that you trust and that uh, are going to do a good job. Don't give this role to someone else in the business that doesn't want to do it. That's one of the, one of the important things. Have other people contribute that want to do it, not just another item in their job description that they don't want to do.